Hey everybody! In today's video, I'm going to show you some fun, spooky paper glaze projects inspired by my friend Erica. I'm starting with two die cuts of this fabulous jack o' lantern creepy die and a few colors of paper glaze. And I have all my spatulas out today, even though I'm not using them. I don't know what I was thinking. But I am using multiple colors, so if you're doing that, you will want to have more than one spatula. Now, Erica showed this technique with this exact same die cut, and I loved it so much. I wanted to add one little thing to it. She's really pretty fearless about mixing her paper glazes and making fun mixed media projects. So I thought I would try mixing it on this die cut as well. So on this first die cut, and these colors look especially good on black, I think. That's what she had done, so I wanted to try that as well, especially if you're doing sort of a spooky nighttime scene. So against the black, this super bright and happy lime green, and one of the several blues that are in the paper glaze line. I happen to love this one. I will mix these two together. Now, often when you open a jar of paper glaze, there's enough on the little lid for you to get started with. The sort of streaky, irregular way that Erica did it, I thought was so spooky and fun. So that's what I'm doing. You're not looking for perfection in this technique. Next, I will grab a little bit of this blue, and I like to get it on the back of the spatula. I always forget and put it on the front, but on the back, it's easier to spread in these little streaks. So I'll streak it around on top of the green next to the green, just sort of covering most of that black cardstock. Don't worry if you don't get it all covered. And I know this looks like a hot mess right now, but trust me and trust Erica, this is going to look fabulous. Now I have a little box of these parchment sheets that I showed you in a separate video that for this type of messy technique are super convenient. And you can use them a few times and then just throw them away when they get too messy. It's a lot easier than cleaning your craft mat and nothing sticks to them so it does have that same feature as your craft mat. Now to maximize the life of any type of product like this, go ahead and put a little bit of cling wrap on before you put the lid on and that will help them keep from drying out. Sometimes if a little bit of glaze gets stuck on the rim of the jar, it won't seal properly and then it can dry out. So that's just a little extra step that I find to be worth it. So I will move that over to dry. And like I said, since it's parchment, it won't stick. So I love these little sheets. Next, I will use just a little bit of gold. This is gonna be sort of more of a moonlit scene. So I'm just going to very lightly apply some gold paper glaze onto this just to give it the effect of sort of moonlight in my spooky little scene. Again, you're not trying to cover the entire die cut. You're just getting these little streaks that make it extra scary for some reason. Now, if you get a little bit of paper glaze in the eye openings, etc., you can always trim that out with an X-Acto while it's still wet. That's what I do. And since I am going to be die cutting this again and filling in those openings with a different paper, you will want that opening to be very clean. Now, same thing. I want to make sure this isn't adhered down to the parchment with a little bit of paper glaze. So I can just move that out of the way. Now I'm going to fold this sheet just to cover up the messy part so I still have a little bit to work with for the next step. Now I kept the negative space from the die cuts because I'm going to be using this like a stencil. So I'm going to create a drop shadow for the paper glazed die cut that I've already made. 
And this is just a fun way to use the dies is to create a little drop shadow. I'm actually going to create the drop shadow with paper glaze. But if you were using a light die cut, you could just use dark cardstock or here you could have a white sort of glowing backdrop for your darker die cut. And that would look really cool too. That would look like moonlight. Very fun, but that's not what I'm doing today. So you can do that. Now I'm using the brown Dahlia, which is probably my favorite paper glaze color, which is weird because I'm not a brown person, but it's such a beautiful color. And I'm going to create the drop shadow on the card using this homemade stencil. Now you'll see at the bottom, I left the little bottom rim of that on, but I am going to fill that in so that there's not a gap at the bottom so that the entire area is filled with paper glaze. But this is such like a clean design, the outline that's left behind that this is very easy to fill with paper glaze. And you can add as much texture as you want with your spatula. I'm just doing kind of vertical stripes that are naturally created with the spatula. But if you wanted to set the larger spatula down and then pick it up for sort of a dendritic look, you could do that as well. I just want to make sure every little piece of white cardstock is covered here and then smooth it just a little bit. I like it a little bit textured. And that will be my drop shadow. Now you don't want to let this sit for too long because it will glue that top piece of paper to the bottom. But look at that marvelous little silhouette. This is also a fun way just to do a silhouette on your card is to do it with paper glaze. But let me show you how that is going to look when it's dry. It's just going to create a little shadow in the background. Very fun. Now I'm folding this again. And I'm going to move the die cut over and I'm going to fill in that bottom part of the drop shadow. This is very easy to do. I'm just going to slap some paper glaze on it. So I want the ground to go all the way down. So I'll just grab a little bit more and smooth that on that little gap at the bottom. Again, this is going to be underneath the die cut. So don't worry if the texture doesn't perfectly match the rest of it. It really doesn't matter. You're not going to see it in the end. You'll just see the edges peeking out. And then you can smooth it a little bit, just like you would cake icing if you want, right at the very end. Now, I do like to go along the edge of the card with the edge of the spatula just to clean that up so that that card bottom is super even and straight. So here's how I finished the first card. I die cut a second image out of gold glitter paper and paper piece that into the eyes so they're sort of glowing. And then I ink blended some rays of light coming down behind it and then offset it a bit on the drop shadow. And then this is the black piece that just had the gold paper glaze on it. And I put that on an ink smushed background from one of the dare to get dirty challenges and it's very fun and spooky so head over to my blog for more information and thanks so much for watching